uh, you guys can repeat after me a couple times here. So we'll say, Bochayim. 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 Yes, I know you like that. We're a flut away. Bochayim. 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 Potamikanin. Choch Nikanin. Choch Nikanin. Nastio is my name. Nastio Nikanin. I'm saying my name's Nastio. Nastio Nikanin. My name's Nastio. Slochayam. Slochayam or Slochayam means hello or goodbye it's kind of like aloha you say it coming or going doesn't matter it actually has another meaning in our language and it means pitiful or destitute <laughs> <laughs> and uh it's 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 no doubt just like asian folks bowing to each other it's just lowering your it's like being humble you're just being humble it literally means it's the thing that incites pity that's what Lohaya means. But that's what you say to each other. And Khadamaikanim is a request. How is your name? That's what it's saying. Khadamaikanim. How's your name? So the answer is Nastio Naikanim. My name's Nastio. Or Choch Naikanim. My name's George. <laughs> Choch is how we say George. The uh, name of Astoria in uh, Chinook is uh is pochoch pochoch means <coughs> fort george pochoch that's what it means fort george uh english people we call king choch king choch king george that's what you call an englishman or an english person king choch in this language just to say it since you're sitting on them we call french folks a uh, Pasayuks, and that means blanket people. Pasusiuks is what it really comes from. Pasusiuks, and it just means the blanket people. Uh, well, so I'm sorry to do it to you, but we have to go around. <laughs> is there an F sound, sort of? Sort of In uh, that, yeah. no, it, it. We're gonna say more about it. Just wing it. You know, one way you can think about it that is not exactly correct, but from an English-speaking perspective, if you think of THL as a combination, fl, right, fl, you're, you're getting closer. We'll say something about how you actually say it, but if you think of THL, that's kind of what's happening in that. So I'm going to ask you, and then I'll ask you, and you guys can just ask each other here. We'll go around. Flachayam, uh, Kadamaikanim. Nashio? Or you would say Susan. Oh, okay. Okay, Susan. Naikanim. Uh-huh. Yeah, Susan. Wawa kabiyaka. Lohayam. Hara maikanim. Michelle. Naikanim. Naikanim. Naika. Uh-huh. Yeah, so ask her. And you can just ask. Ask behind you. Lohayam. Hara maikanim. Beth. Naikanim. For number for for letter B down here, yeah. that's if we were gonna have a little more time and continue, we could ask, you know, I could ask you, what's her name? How's her name? And then you would say Lynn Yakanim. That's what this is saying. That's what B is saying. What's her name? Lynn's her name. Right? But we're not gonna go on with that. It's just I just want everybody a chance to say The truth is where it says so it says Kadamika name. If you just say Kadamika, Kadamika, it's actually kind of the easiest thing you could just. Uh, it's kind of the most approachable thing in this language. Kadamika, how are you? Kadamika, how are you? 
when people ask, they say, how do you say hello in Chinook? If I'm just on the street, I don't want to bother even trying to tell you how to say uh, <laughs> I am because it's there's a lot going on there. So, you know, just teaching somebody, Hotamica, how are you? Right, Hotamica, how are you? And we have a word, uh, I was wondering if it's on the other. Uh, yeah. So on the sound chart, third uh, column down, last word is uh, floosh. 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 And that means good. So if you say Hotamica, the answer to that is floosh Nica. Floosh Nica. It's literally saying good I am, right? Floosh Nica. Floosh Nica. So it's opposite of English. It's not saying Nica floosh, I'm good. It's floosh Nica. <laughs> so, with this said, the most important thing that I can have you guys go away from t today is a better understanding of how this language came to be, the history of it, whatever. Hopefully we'll have time to go through this sound chart and a couple other things, but I just, so who's ever heard of Chinook jargon? So, you know, Chinook jargon typically, if you went to a, a library, for one, if you went to a good library, you might literally find a hundred dictionaries because there were well over a hundred dictionaries published of Chinook jargon. It's called Chinook jargon. And they were basically, the original ones of those were basically published for non-Indians coming to the Pacific Northwest who had the need to communicate because absolutely the language to speak early on here was Chinook, right? That's just, you know, especially really early on. If you're going to Fort Vancouver, you better know Chinook, period. So there were dictionaries written by some people that actually were very good speakers. And then there are multiple reproductions and people thinking they're adding a little bit here or there. Tons of plagiarism going on in all these dictionaries. Bottom line is they basically represent the language as used between non-Indians and Indians. That's only a small portion of how this language was used because the language's origin is with natives and its fullest use was always with, you know, Indian to Indian. I mean, the fullness of the language. If you look at those dictionaries, they'll say things like the Hudson Bay Company made up this language. Well. You know, a lot of people have believed that, including some Indians have believed that because it's just written. That's what's written, right? This is the information out there. But looking at it linguistically, uh, and, you know, I mean, I was taught that Chinook, Chinook Wawa, this language, pre-existed contact. You know, it was here as a basically, you know, intertribal trade language uh, from the beginning. But... Uh, when you look closely at it, the types of words, the, you know, the class of words, the ways in which they're reduced, because what happened is, you know, Chinook Wawa, as it was probably used for thousands of years, is, is just an indigenous pidgin. A pidgin meaning, right, you've got a definition here, it's basically a contact language used by adults who don't otherwise share a common language. So in the context of trade, whatever it is, if there's a place where everybody gets together, couple times a year to trade and nobody shares a common language you know these languages develop they develop all over the world 